Hi everyone, my name is Anushka Jain and I work as the Transparency and Right to Information Fellow at the Internet Freedom Foundation. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about the National Intelligence Grid, better known as the NAT Grid. NAT Grid was conceptualized by the then Home Minister P. Chidambaram in 2009 in a bid to revamp India's internal security structure and create a centralized database which can be easily accessed by intelligence agencies at the national level. As we all know, security is a state subject and the police force is controlled by the state governments. However, Post the 26-11 attacks in Mumbai, a need was felt for facilitating higher coordination between intelligence and law enforcement agencies. This was because it was felt that there is a vital deficiency in the security structure of India. The lack of real-time information, which was considered to be one of the major hurdles in detecting US terror suspect David Hadley's movement across the country during his multiple visits between 2006 and 2009. NADRIT was set up as an attached office of the Ministry of Home Affairs with effect from December 1, 2010. Further, the Cabinet Committee on Security has in principle approved the detailed project report of NADRIT on June 6, 2011. The Planning Commission also accorded its in principle approval to the project on July 8, 2011 as a central plan scheme in, under the Ministry of Home Affairs from 2011 to 12. According to reports, the NAT grid has a total budget of 3,400 crores. However, the proposed solution has been on hold since then and has not been launched in the 10 years since. On November 19, 2019, in response to a parliamentary question, the Minister of State for Home Affairs, G. Kishan Reddy, stated that the project has developed application software for proof of technology and NAT grid is planned to go live by the end of this year. However, before we move forward with the plan for NADGRID. Let's discuss what is NADGRID. The NADGRID is conceived to be a framework which will leverage information technology to connect approved user agencies such as security and law enforcement agencies with designated data providers such as airline, banks, SEBI, railway, telecom, etc. with a view to enhance the country's counter-terrorism capability. The platform envisages approved operating procedures and oversight mechanisms to facilitate access between users and providers to enable them to analyze and disseminate information or intelligence for synergizing efforts to counter terrorism related activities. The proposed user agencies of NADGRID are the Intelligence Bureau, the Research and Analysis Wing, the Central Bureau of Investigation, the Directorate of Revenue Intelligence, the Enforcement, in the Enforcement Directorate, the Financial Intelligence Unit, the Central Board of Direct Taxes, the Central Board of Excise and Customs, the Directorate General of Central Excise and Intelligence, and the Narcotics Control Bureau. No state agency is included in the proposed user agencies of NatGrid. In the first phase, these 10 user agencies will be connected with 21 service providers, and later, about 1,950 additional organizations will be linked. These service or data providers will provide access to data related to immigration, entry and exit, banking and financial transactions, telecommunications, including mobile numbers, vehicle numbers, passport details and in later phases, train and air ticketing details. It has also been reported that NIGRID will have access to the income tax department's PAN records and individual taxpayer data. According to an order issued by the Central Board of Direct Taxes, the department will share bulk information starting from PAN to the taxpayer's name and all the individual data that it captures like father's name, gender, date of birth, photograph, and signature or thumb impression. The department will also share with the NADGRID all information available in the department's database regarding residential and office addresses and phone and mobile numbers of all taxpayers. Reports have also suggested that the government could link social media accounts with NADGRID. However, this move has faced severe resistance from the intelligence agencies whose officials fear that linking social media accounts to sensitive government data could expose the system to Trojan attacks. The NADGRID would utilize big data and analytics to study huge amounts of data generated from the 21 data sources of various intelligence and enforcement agencies to analyze events in order to get a better picture as well as to trail suspects. NADGRID is currently headed by IAS officer Ashish Gupta. There are around 70 personnel drawn from both the government and private sectors in NADGRID. The main office complex for NADGRID is being constructed in New Delhi with a data recovery center in Bengaluru. All this sounds very nice and the question that arises is what is the problem with NADGRID? Why are we talking about NADGRID right now? The problem that arises with regard to NADGRID 
is the privacy concerns that surround it. On March 13, 2012, the then Minister of State for Home Affairs, Jitendra Singh, in response to a parliamentary question, acknowledged that the government is cognizant of the privacy concerns surrounding NatWiz. He further stated that NatWiz security framework had been designed to protect secrecy and privacy of information within the NatWiz system. The extent legal regime regarding privacy ipso facto applies to NatWiz. However, it is important to note here that the Right to Information Act 2000, which aims to bring transparency and accountability to government authorities, contains a provision which exempts intelligence agencies from its purview under Section 24, Clause 2 of the Act. The NAT grid is exempted from, from the RTI Act. In addition to being exempt from the RTI Act, the NADRID is also being developed and deployed in the absence of a data protection law in India. Since NADRID aims to collect data from various sources to create profiles of people to track their criminal activity, it is necessary that data protection measures be put in place to ensure that the NADRID does not violate its mandate by suffering from function creep. Function creep occurs when information is used for a purpose that is not the original specified purpose. In the absence of a data protection law, as well as by being exempt from disclosures under the RTI Act, the NADRID presents a very obvious danger of becoming a tool for state-sponsored mass surveillance. The prevailing legal regime regarding privacy can thus be reduced to the decision of the Honorable Supreme Court in Justice K.S. Putraswamy versus Union of India which states that any justifiable intrusion by the state into people's right to privacy, which is protected under Article 21 of the Constitution, must conform to certain thresholds, which include legality, necessity, proportionality, and procedural safeguards. Thus, we should look at whether NADRIT satisfies these thresholds and follows the right to privacy judgment of the Supreme Court. The threshold of legality requires that the intrusion must take place in a defined regime of law. That is, there must be an anchoring legislation with a clear set of provisions which allow the intrusion into right to privacy. However, in response to a parliamentary question on December 17, 2013, the then Minister of State for Home Affairs, RPN Singh, stated that the government does not plan to issue any executive order to give up legal framework to NADPRIT. The threshold of procedural safeguards is also not satisfied by NADPRIT. This is because the threshold of procedural safeguards requires that there is an appropriate independent institutional mechanism with inbuilt procedural safeguards aligned with standards of procedure established by law which are just fair and reasonable to prevent abuse. However, in response to a parliamentary question on March 1, 2016, the Minister of State for Home Affairs, Haribhai Parthibhai Chaudhary, stated that an audit committee headed by Deputy National Security Advisor has been constituted to audit the manner in which the data is accessed and sought to be used. It is our view that such a measure is not sufficient enough to satisfactorily respond to the privacy concerns which may arise. This look at NatGrid is the first in our newly launched series called Watch the Watchman, in which we will be looking at the various surveillance technology measures that the government is slowly deploying. Thank you.